All right, this is our last Sunday in February, our celebration of the divine abundance of love. And over there, you know, on the first Sunday, we planted our blessings for love, and we're going to be sending those to Silent Unity this, uh, this week. We'll be putting them there. And then um, later today, when our children come in, they are going to be putting on their symbol of the fruit of love. So um, we'll be knowing that that love that we've got is flowing. And I'm going to tell you right now, you can probably tell I'm getting over a cold, and so I may sneeze and I have this microphone on, so you're going to hear that. You're going to really hear it. So we'll see. I'll try not to blow my nose and invite you into my world with this. But anyway, so with that, knowing that we are flowing with love, let's align ourselves with this truth statement because it's working in our lives, right? The love is flowing. So let's align with this three times, and we align with it not to make it true, but because it, it is true. That's right, and it helps condition our thoughts and delve into that place in us that is the Christ. So here we go. Let's affirm it. I live, move, and have my being in God's empowering love. Let's affirm it again. I live, move, and have my being in God's empowering love. Feel that and let that just, just swell up in you and let's affirm it again. I live, move, and have my being in God's empowering love. Absolutely. And you know, we had a wonderful experience of that this weekend. We had 21 people attend our workshop the Communicating Across Differences workshop, and what we were doing in there was learning how to make that real. How is it that we, in relationship, can communicate so that we um, let love be real, so that it's not just this abstract idea, but that it is, it's, it's how, what happens uh, with people, and it takes some work. So I'm putting them on the spot, but I'm going to ask the people that attended the workshop in just a minute to stand up. And the reason for this is I want you to see who they are so that you can grab them after the service or sometime during the week or next week and say, what was that like? What did you learn? What's new for you? And then just a little bit later, uh, Pastor Carol and Pastor Martha are going to share some things up here. Um, about what they learned. So would all of you who came to the workshop please stand up so people can see who you are. All right, good deal. So take a good look and um, again make sure that you uh, see them so that you can talk to them and say what did you get out of that? It was powerful wasn't it? Yes. It was amazing. It was, so thank y'all for coming and for doing the work because we worked. We really did. And it was wonderful. It was, it was a great experience. So I'm going to share some ideas from that with you this morning. And as I said, in just a little bit, um, Pastor Martha and Pastor Carol are going to come and share what they got out of it. So, all right, here's the, here's the story. You ready for this? All right. There was this man who walked out in his yard, and he noticed that his dog was coming toward him. And he was appalled because his dog had in his mouth this dead rabbit. And the rabbit didn't look good. And the man looked at that rabbit, and he thought, uh-oh. That's my neighbor's pet rabbit that he keeps out in the cage out in his yard. <laughs> this was one of those people, you know, that maybe, maybe like some of us who will go to any lengths to avoid controversy. You ever done that? So he's like, uh-oh, 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 this is terrible. If my dog killed that rabbit, um, it's bad. So he got the rabbit away from the dog. Um, he, he hosed it off. Then he got the dryer out and kind of dried it off, fluffed it up. Looked, looked pretty good. So... Um, so then he sneaks over after it gets dark and he puts it back in the, in the neighbor's yard in the rabbit cage. So the next day he's out and his neighbor's out and, and, um, and the man, he just couldn't leave this alone. The man couldn't leave it alone. So he says to the neighbor, he says, oh, how's everything going? And the neighbor says, great. And then he really couldn't leave it alone. He says, well, how's your rabbit? And the neighbor says, he says, you know, he said that rabbit had a long and good life and he died two days ago, but it's amazing. I buried him out in the yard. He said, but the amazing thing is somehow he is now back in his cage. <laughs> we create lots of problems for ourselves, do we not? In our efforts to avoid controversy. Most of us, I mean, will do anything to not have to have a disagreement with somebody, right? Or not to, quote, 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 get caught you know, doing something that was just, you know, a little mistake or whatever. And boy, what a price we pay for that. What a price we pay. 
because the more that we avoid having meaningful conversations, the more that we avoid having significant conversations, and significant conversations, my friends, are always going to in involve discomfort. You know, sometimes in life we go around and we think, you know, my goal in life is to be comfortable. You ever thought that? I just want to be comfortable. So don't do anything that's going to make me uncomfortable. But life, have you noticed how pretty much on an hourly basis, life serves up stuff that tends to have the possibility of making us uncomfortable. And that's always a gift. That's a gift because it's only when we're uncomfortable that we get stirred up. It's only when we're uncomfortable that we're willing and able to look deeper inside of ourselves and bring forth what's real and bring forth what's true. Because otherwise, we're just living on the surface. And, and the price that we pay for that is isolation. You know, it's, I didn't go to the trouble of looking up the statistics because I've read all this stuff before many times and I can't tell you the statistics. But it is a fact that loneliness is one of the biggest concerns that people in this country have. I'm lonely. And it's not necessarily because they're living alone. Sometimes it is. But it's because we, even if we're living right next to somebody, if we're living with somebody in the same house, if we are emotionally shut off from them, if we're not willing to be a little uncomfortable and have those significant conversations, we might as well be living in Antarctica for all the good it does us because we are not opening our hearts, we're not opening our minds, and we are not connected to that person. Sometimes, you know, I, I understand why people do this. I understand why I do it. Because a lot of times, many people, not everybody, but many of us have had less than happy experiences trying to communicate when we have differences of opinion. I bet we could tell some stories, right? About, well, I know what happened in my house growing up. You know, if somebody had a difference of opinion with so-and-so, well, you know, we could, we could fill in the blank. And because, again, maybe uh, some people do know how to communicate across differences, but it's not a, not a, a prolific skill that gets taught or used a lot of times so that we, we either uh, just say it's my way or the highway or somebody, we learn that and that's how it goes, somebody says it's my way or the highway, sometimes that's how it went. Or sometimes um, we learn that people just, they just disagree but then they kind of build the ice wall so they just kind of agree to, to not talk and they just, I mean you can agree to disagree if you do that openly but if you just kind of build the ice wall then you just get farther and farther and farther apart. So sometimes that's how it happened. Or sometimes people had a knockdown, drag out fight, you know, either verbally or physically. And so we have often had less than happy experiences about how you communicate across differences. But you know what? It's really possible to learn how to do that. It's possible to build the consciousness and to build the skill to, um, if you're attentive to relationship, if you're attentive to respecting yourself, if you're attentive to developing your own relationship with God and your consciousness of love and wisdom, and build even just a little bit of skill. You don't have to, you know, uh, be tremendously skillful at it, but just build a, a lot of willingness, a lot of love and wisdom, and a, just a little tad of skill, and you, you can do anything. You can communicate with anybody pretty much about anything, you know, unless they're completely unwilling, and that's kind of another story for another day. But for the most part, when we come together in love and wisdom, what happens is that we create amazing solutions. Nothing can stop two people or a church or a family when they communicate in love and when they're willing to show up and be vulnerable and be honest and communicate with respect and, uh, and wow, that's when the creativity comes forth. And we saw that yesterday, didn't we? We did some exercises with that and it was a lot of fun and it was amazing the difference when we uh, made sure that we were coming from love and respect. We created all kinds of amazing solutions. We just had a little silly role play. It's amazing. It feels almost magical. It's not magic. You know what it is? Spirit. It's spirit. 
We know the truth is that we're all one. We're all expressions of God. Kind of an image that uh, stands out for me with that, you know, is, is white light. We know that white light is, has all the colors of the rainbow in it. It's a spectrum. So that if you have white light and you hold up a prism in that white light and the sunlight, you know what happens. It, it separates out into all those colors. So as human beings, we're living out in that rainbow, and we look around and we think, well, I'm all different from them. I have different opinions, whatever. You know, I have different needs, I, or I want the same thing they want, so who's going to get it first? And all that kind of stuff. So it's good to notice that we're different in expression, and yet when we go back to the one, and we know that we're all that light, we're all that oneness of that light expressing in this rainbow. And we come back to that consciousness of oneness, and we stay in that place, and from that place, boy, we can just communicate across that rainbow. And we can do anything. We can create absolutely anything. And it's, it's just wonderful. Wouldn't it be great to, to know that you never have to be afraid of people again? Would you like that? I would. I work on that all the time. Okay. We don't have to be afraid of each other. When we really get into the, not just the head thing, you know, of like, oh yes, I know we're all one, I know that I behold the Christ in you. That's all nice and nice, but it's got to get out of here, just in here, and get in the, in the whole being. It's got to get in the heart, it's got to get in the body, it's got to get in the behaviors, it's got to get in the reality. And my experience is that doesn't come easy. My experience is to have that, I have to take some risks. I have to take some risks to be honest, I have to take some risks to be kind when I don't want to be kind. I have to take some risks to listen and be changed by somebody else. Listening is one of the most vulnerable things that we do when we really hear somebody because we're liable to get changed because they might say something that is right or means something to us or touches us. So but interacting with people is always the possibility and the probability that in a good way we're going to be affected, we're going to be transformed. And that's really, that's really what we're after. So we can learn to let go of that fear of people, to let go of that, uh, those concerns, and come to that place where we have the confidence and assurance that I can be in relationship, in interaction, in communication with anybody about anything. That's a big deal. I think our world could use that, do you? There's seven billion plus of us. And um, I think a lot of people were concerned about violence, you know, we're concerned about um, all kinds of things uh, like that. Am I safe in this world? What makes us safe is when we get it, that we're one, that we're all light, expressing as that rainbow, and when we do the work to find and live that light in ourselves and find and live that light in other people, that is the only way we create a safe world. And I'll say that again, it's the only way we create a safe world. Because God can't harm God's self. It's impossible. But if I don't know that, I mean, I can know that in my head, but if I don't live it, it's still going to be a limitation. I'm still not going to get the full benefit of it. But the more that I live it, the safer I am, the freer I am to go where I want to go, to be who I am, and to make those wonderful creative connections with people. I want to share this uh, quotation with you. This is from, it's a Chinese proverb. It says, where there's peace in the heart, there'll be peace in the home. Where there's peace in the home, there'll be peace in the community. When there's peace in the community, there'll be peace in the nation. And when there's peace in the nation, there'll be peace in the world. That's how it works. That's the truth. Now I'm going to ask um, Pastor Carol and then Pastor Martha to come up. And if I put them on the spot this morning. I said, would y'all do this? And they said, oh yeah. So if they'd come up and share a little bit about what they got from the workshop. So thanks for being willing to do this on the spur of the moment here. Well, it was pretty profound, especially um, afterwards. It was kind of interesting. We spoke about it in my Sunday school class this morning. Um, instead of having my regular Sunday school class, we kind of discussed the work uh, workshop because for several of us, that kind of aha moment um, was after the workshop. 
uh, for some of us that was during the workshop. It's, uh, it was really interesting. It was um, profound in that um, you kind of, if you've ever taken communications or um, conflict courses, I know through my work, uh, my previous work since I'm retired now, uh, we've had courses, but this was a little bit different. Um, especially looking at it, not just for church, but it affects all of your relationships. But to look at yourself, though, some of these activities um, made me realize, hmm, I really do need to do some work there. Or, wow, what I thought might have been um, not something so conflicting or something, um, something I might have thought was supportive really wasn't. It was, a, it was a good way to look at myself and my relationships um, with myself, especially the relationship I have with myself and the relationship I have with those around me. Um, but not just people, it's the, the things. Um, my, with my, um, it was about people and content and processes. So it wasn't just one aspect. Um, but like I said, it was an aha moment for many of us in Sunday school. And what we also talked about is aha moments aren't always, oh, I feel wonderful. Some of these aha moments were, oh my god, I do that. Uh-huh, uh-huh, oh, uh-huh. <laughs> so and it was eye-opening, and that's, as you said, that stirs something in you, and that's where we start to change, and we kind of... Yeah, so it was profound for some of us, and we're still processing it, and I think we will for the next couple of weeks. It was really, uh, it was a wonderful workshop, so I've learned a lot, and I'm still learning. I'm still processing. Oh, yeah, it takes a lot. Yeah. It really uh -huh. does. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, Carol. All right. Well, I did tell everything that Carol says. Well, I'm going to be honest with you. I did not want to go. <laughs> but I must tell you that Dr. Schaus has a way of conducting her classes, and the materials that she shares with you has a way of just making you get out of the way of yourself. And it opens up your heart and your mind to something totally new and different. My big takeaway uh, from the workshop, I don't like conflict. Conflict is very uncomfortable for me. But my takeaway from it was that conflict does not have to be bad. When you learn how to communicate with love and respect, conflict can actually be a gateway to something much better and bigger for both parties or for whomever is concerned. Um, and like I said, Dr. Schaus has a way of making you just kind of get out of the way of yourself <laughs> and uh, open your mind up to brand new possibilities. It was a great time to share with, with our community the, the love and the feelings that we uh, shared with one another, our expressions. It uh, was a, quite a growing experience for me. So um, if you didn't attend, but uh, I know we're gonna have uh, other workshops uh, on communication, I will encourage you to attend. For those of you who weren't there, you really did miss something. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for doing that. All right. Thank you so much. And and um, kind of one of, one of the ideas that we talked about that I'll share with you here is the idea of what what uh, Pastor Martha alluded to is that conflict isn't really the issue. Conflict is just a difference that makes a difference. It's just the idea that oh, you, have, you want, I say tomato, you say tomato. Who cares? That doesn't matter. The issue is how people deal with it. That's what usually freaks us out. So what we did was we focused on just what she was saying is that conflict or difference is, how, is where creativity comes from. And when we focus on that love and respect and communicate about it, um, it's not scary anymore. I mean, it takes some risk and it may be uncomfortable, but it's not like, whoa, it's not that one anymore. That, and that really what comes forth is creativity. So um, our scripture today is, uh, is about judge not that you be not judged. It's, it's in Luke. I'll just share this with you here because it's so uh, profound and so related to this. It says, don't judge and you won't be judged. Don't condemn and you won't be condemned. Forgive and you'll be forgiven. Give and it'll be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over will be put into your lap. 
for the measure you give will be the measure you get back. That's what it's all about. And in this sense, judge doesn't mean don't have discernment. It means, yes, we need to have wisdom, but it means don't be condemnatory. Don't condemn yourself. Don't condemn other people. Come to all of your relationships with a willingness to forgive, which just in, in our understanding, our spiritual understanding, means simply to give love. It just means I'm willing to give love no matter what happens. And I'm willing to give love, wise wisdom, wisdom and love no matter what happens. And when I do that, boy, is my life bountiful. And that's what it's all about. So we can agree and disagree in love, can we not? Indeed. So it's a, it's a joy to be here, and uh, a joy to be uh, in this church, and a joy to be working with all of you. And, and everybody here is so committed to their spiritual life, and it is just wonderful. So, somebody's calling us. That's okay. So, so we're good. Peggy's getting a call from somebody that loves her. Okay, no, okay. <laughs> okay, that's okay. So, with that, let's take a moment in prayer and, and close. Mother, Father, God, we're grateful, truly, 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 so grateful that we are one and that we're all learning how to let that be real. Thank you, God. We affirm this in the name and through the nature of the living, loving Christ. Amen. Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet the song. That saved a soul like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now. Ooh.